Hello everyone, Eric the Car Guy here, and I am back with another video for you. This one is not necessarily a repair video, but it's about auto repair. And this one actually got its genesis back when I posted on my Facebook and Google about, uh, I got in the mail service manuals for my 2001 Honda Odyssey. And these are factory service manuals here. And I ended up paying about 80 bucks for them used. Uh, new they cost, I think it's somewhere north of $100 for the actual service manual. With, with Honda manuals, they have two. They have the service manuals and they have what is referred to as the ETMs. And this is electrical troubleshooting manuals. Uh, these things are kind of the companions that we used to get at the dealership. Nowadays, actually, I, I don't even think they have the, the paper manuals that they put out anymore. I think it's all electronically updated through their uh, proprietary system. Um, is how you get service manuals for, for new vehicles. But every time a new model year would come out, we would get a set of these. So I went and bought these for my Odyssey because, uh, you know, having this information is, is like gold. And I, I'd actually like to do a comparison between the factory service manuals and some of the other manuals that you get out there. And I'd like to preface this by saying that I'm not picking on any particular manual provider that's out there. I'm not saying that the, man the manuals I'm going over in this video, they're, that they're bad in any way, shape, or form. I just want to do a comparison between those and the factory service manuals and the different things that you can get. So let's head over to the bench and talk a little bit more about manuals. Okay, let's start out with an important distinction. I'm not talking about the owner's manual, which is the thing that you would get when you purchase a new vehicle. Uh, usually they f you find this in a glove box. And this covers all the general information, how to operate the different controls, uh, you know, when to do service intervals. I mean, it's, it, and basically how to use the vehicle. Now these are ultra useful, and like I say, normally come with a, a new vehicle. If you get it used, uh, you may not have this, but I'm not talking about the owner's manual. I'm talking about the thing that the technicians would get, which is this is the factory service manual. This is the electrical troubleshooting manual, as I said, and this is the actual service manual. Now, like I said, this to me is absolute gold because it covers every nut, every bolt, um, all of your torque specifications. In fact, I think in the beginning of these, I mean, they, they outline in the table of contents all the specifications. Uh, what the fluid capacities are, what type of fluids to use, uh, the lift points, the precautionary things, um, all of the uh, clearances, uh, tolerances, uh, just, you know, the, the people that made the vehicle made this manual, okay? There's, there's just no shortcuts. They made the vehicle, they made the manual to go with the vehicle. Now, I'm not saying these are always 100% correct because uh, there are times where they need to make revisions on these and uh, You may find that some of this information isn't 100% accurate. What you will find however is just Like the nuts and bolts of how to go about the different procedures Like like here's one on uh, Valve springs and valve seals and we, we've just get, we're just still in the first section as far as the engine is concerned And how that's put together the thermostat then we uh, go to cool the cooling system and how that is supposed to operate. Um, and even even some some electrical tests uh, are broken down in here, but even more so in this. Now, as far as Hondas are concerned, in my opinion, there's nothing better than this because this is every single system on the vehicle that it has. And not just that, it's got, it tells you what, what all the symbols and everything mean, but it gives you breakouts of all the fuse boxes and everything that's in a particular fuse and what they all control. Then every circuit is broken down, every single one on that vehicle. But wait, there's more. And this is my favorite part of, of Honda electrical troubleshooting manuals. And all the time, I mean, a lot of you people come to me and you, you, you talk about certain electrical problems that you might have and how do you solve them. This is how you solve them. It starts with the wiring diagram and, uh, and you've got to have a working knowledge of how to read them. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but what I wanted to show you was this. These groups of photographs tell you where everything is, what it looks like, and it's, it's all broken down for you. And these are all the connectors and each wire that's in each one of these connectors, everything. Bottom line, I mean, and it's not just that, it's, it's emission controls. Um, it's the automatic transmission, which is why I got this. Um, it's, you know, suspension, it's brakes, it's the body. 
It's, you know, I, I can't stress enough, body electrical. It's, and at the end it should be SRS all the way, in the, all the way at the end. Come on, yeah. And here we go with our, our SRS stuff and our restraints. In short, this is the Bible for that vehicle. Um, once again, not to be confused with the owner's manual, which is a really great start. This is a thumbnail sketch. This is the entire fleshed out painting right here. Now, I'm not picking on this brand of manual, okay? And I'm not saying that this manual does not have its place. But I also have this manual. And it, it covers things that are outside. It also has some great photographs. It also has some great explanations. But for me, um, when these fall short, because they take their own photographs, I mean, they really go through, uh, you know, a long, drawn-out process in order to try and to give you as much information as possible. I mean, they disassemble the engine, they take pictures, they show you how to, you know, resurface the inside of the block, how to use plastic gauge. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and then we're getting into the HVAC systems in this. Let me see if I can find where these manuals lose me. Okay. And this is, this is where I start to get lost. In my experience, these manuals, the wiring diagrams are not as good. Um, they're not as accurate and sometimes, in my opinion, more difficult to read because if you compare like what you're seeing here to what you see here of a circuit diagram, I mean, here is the complete circuit on a page. Here you have bits and pieces. Sometimes this can be misleading, especially if you're not used to reading wiring diagrams. And if you have electrical issues, a good wiring diagram is going to make the difference between an effective repair and you just chasing your tail for days and days and days. Now, once again, I can't stress enough. I'm not saying that these are bad because they even cover bodywork, which is something that the factory service manual does not do. So the, these things certainly have their place, but that's the way I see this. This has its place, okay? It's not, I'm not saying it's a substitute, whatever. It's, it's another, another take on the same information. This is a good general overview. This is the Bible. Just look at the thickness between these two manuals right here, okay? Y you can see that this has more information. Now this is for, these are completely different vehicles. It's probably not a fair comparison, but that's where I'm coming from. Now let me throw in something else into this mix. So not only did I buy this factory service manual, I also bought this factory service manual for the Subaru. Now this was a PDF that I purchased. Remember how I said that I got these for around 80 bucks? I got this for about eight bucks and I burned it to this DVD. And this is the factory service manual. Let's go over to the computer and have a look at it. Okay, check it out. This is the same as that paper man manual that I had, but it was one tenth the cost. And it covers everything. I mean, we have our emission controls. Um, it's gonna take a minute since it's on the CD. But this is what I like about these electronic versions is that they're searchable. So if I want to find, like, say, information on the rear defogger, I can just type that in, hit return, and it's going to search through the entire manual for information on that. And then poof, here it is. We got service procedures on how to service the glass. And this is all, once again, factory information. It's just in PDF format. Now, me, for my money, uh, this is the way to go. Those paper manuals can be pretty expensive, but here you are, and this is the actual factory service manual, once again, that um, goes through. Here, here's all the stuff on the engine, the specifications just like we had before, the stuff on the timing belt all the clearances, all the tolerances, uh, exploded views of, of the engine itself. You know, this is just, this information to me is what I would use as a professional technician in order to service a vehicle. Um, and, and there are other things available to like say shop owners like uh, say Mitchell On Demand or All Data. 
uh, you know, that, that also offer this type of information instead of having to get each and every single manual for each and every single vehicle. Um, they, they offer a service that, that covers much of this. But yeah, I mean, we're whizzing by the entire timing belt procedure here. But for me, for my money, I'm going to say these electronic ones that I, like I said, I bought this as a download for $8 off of eBay. And it is, in my opinion, money very well spent. Let's wrap this up. Manuals. Super important if, you, if you're servicing your vehicle. Uh, and in my opinion, the factory manuals are the best way to go. I'm not saying that the other people that make manuals in the aftermarket are not doing a good job, it's just, it's not the same. It's not made by the people that, that manufacture the vehicle itself. Those manuals do have their place, and they do come at considerably less of, of an expense than the actual factory manuals. I mean, you can find them used. The newer your vehicle, the, the more expensive it may be. But in, in my search for a manual for the, the Subaru, the 97 Subaru I got, I've got to say that, in my opinion, I mean, it sure beats lugging this around as opposed to this and this. So if you can find yourself a PDF version or some kind of electronic version of the manual for your vehicle, in my opinion, that's probably the best way to go. Uh, the number one reason is if you run into electrical problems, I think that is the best source for your wiring diagrams. Uh, the most accurate, the most accurate. Now I have found mistakes in factory manuals. It's rare, but it does happen. But of course, any mistake in a situation like that can cost you time and effort. But once again, that's not something that happens all that often. So I wouldn't really, you know, think that that's going to happen. And don't, be, don't let that be the first thing that you think if you run into a problem during, you know, your diagnosis that uh, it's actually the manual's fault. Blame yourself first. Trust me. I, I've made plenty of mistakes myself. And they were my mistakes. They weren't the mistakes of the manuals. So I hope this uh, information was helpful to you in your uh, search for manuals, uh, should you be out there looking. I, I know that the price of manuals is probably going to go up now that those of you are going to go out there looking for them. But I would say go for the electronic versions. They'll be, I think, easier to find. I really don't think $8 is just too bad a price to pay for what I got, a factory service manual in PDF form. To me, that's a great value. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at EricTheCarGuy.com or you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and now on Google+. And I close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. Till next time, go find yourself a manual. See you later.